God, man, machine, the AI sermon that left believers in disbelief. And from East Hampton, New York, the groundbreaking Rabbi Joshua Franklin of the Jewish Center of the Hamptons is joining us uh, now. So, Rabbi Franklin, is it all, uh, it is rather, all so very poetic since the topic of the sermon was all about a surprising revelation, right? So, let's get to the basics. How did you come up with this idea? What was your goal here? Yeah, I mean, I should say that ChatGPT really wrote a sermon, this new artificial intelligence model that's able to generate and synthesize content in order to create something that is coherent and cogent and actually has the ability, I think, to fool people that uh, that a human was able to write it. In fact, when I gave the sermon, I, I very clearly articulated that I was about to do something that is perhaps considered unethical, plagiarize a sermon, if you will. Yeah. And I read the sermon to the congregation, and they thought it was written by uh, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, Zikron Ali Bracha, wow. or Rabbi Larry Hoffman, one of my mentors, another major rabbi. Um, they thought it might have been written by my father, who's also a rabbi. This, this really fooled them, and they enjoyed the content of it until I re revealed to them that this was written by artificial intelligence. And, and then what? I can I can only imagine the faces, right? Yeah, there was a little bit of shock. Uh, there was some clapping that was going on, and I reminded the congregation that you might be, you know, impressed. I'm a little worried. Uh, I think ChatGPT and all these models of artificial intelligence they beg the question of are our jobs safe? Of course, there mm. are people out there who worry that this artificial intelligence will replace what they do. As a rabbi, I, I don't really fear that. Don't you? Can't AI replace a rabbi? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, even uh, the content that it created was lacking. It was hmm. a sermon about vulnerability, and it started, hey, friends, let me tell you about the Torah portion this week or something along those right, lines. Right, okay. But if a rabbi is going to start a sermon about vulnerability, they're going to talk about a vulnerable experience and model vulnerability for the community. That's something that artificial intelligence isn't able to do. We're in the business of creating community, relationships, love, and compassion, all things that artificial intelligence and ChatGPT lack. And it might seem that artificial intelligence is able to understand emotion, which it is, perhaps even better than human beings. But it's not able to be authentically empathetic, to experience the very emotions, to sit with someone and be a part of the experience that they're going through. And I think that's what's going to make rabbis distinctly human and us distinctly human, something that artificial intelligence will never really have. And it'll force us to hone those skills and those human qualities even more so than we already have. And, and Rabbi, uh, you know, our tendency uh, is perhaps to see the future progress, technological advancements as somewhat contradicting faith and religion and, and spirit. But but is that necessarily so? Or can the creation of human mind complement the human soul to an extent? Now, one of the fascinating things is that spirituality is an experience that we feel foremost, and sometimes we try to put words to that spiritual experience, that out-of-body connection that we might have with God. But really, those experiences are ineffable, unexplainable. They, they don't have words. They just have what they are, and you know it when you feel it. Chat GPT might be able to describe things quite well, and it's going to get better at it. But it won't be able to understand those experiences because it won't be able to have those kind of emotions and spiritual connections itself. And I, I think as, as much as ChatGPT is going to be able to develop and get smarter, it's not going to be able to get more spiritual and have more faith.